Hey guys, you're listening to the Town of Football podcast, and this is our analysis of the NFC East prior to the 2018 NFL season. Thank you guys so much for joining us on this podcast. It's hot outside, burning up. Um, it's summertime, you guys are outside of school. Or if you don't go to school, that's fine. It's whatever. I hate school. Do you hate school? I hate school, man. I graduated. It's yeah. I graduated. I, I he's doing the air quotes. Um, I graduated too, and I learned nothing. Yeah. And I, now I have twenty thousand in student loan debt. I luckily don't have debt, but I have a lot of regret from four years of college. Dude, <laughs> you and you and me both. Not the debt part, because I'm I'm still paying for that. But, um. Back to football. My name is Hassan Khan. I'm the host of this show, Town of Football. So we've been doing this web series um, or this whole podcast series where we talk about each division in football, eight divisions, four in each each division. And today uh, we're going to get to our third division that we're talking about in the NFC, and that is the NFC East. That's the Cowboys, the Redskins, the Giants, and the Eagles. We're going to talk about them in that order. And... We're going to continue um, with getting more of you guys, more of the fans on this show and joining us um, here today, sitting right across from me, is a guy named John Castle, who is a big Philadelphia Eagles fan. John, how are you doing? Oh, wait. You have to say Super Bowl 52 champion. Oh, okay. Philadelphia Eagles fan. Ladies and gentlemen, let's backtrack. Maybe I can cut this part out. But what I meant to say was, Fan of the 2007, oh, oh, 18. 18. No, 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 it's 2017 season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we were kind of like, all right. right. But anyways, fan of the Super Bowl 52 world champions, the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. Doesn't that sound amazing? It feels amazing. It's 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 been a long time coming. Finally, it has. Uh, But John, you're going to be joining us in. Tell us a little bit about your background. Where'd you grow up? How'd you become an Eagles fan? Yeah, um, so I grew up in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is about an hour, I guess, southeast or north, north no, sorry, northwest of Philadelphia, so i got to drive southeast to get there, and um, just everyone in that area is just diehard Eagles fans, so um, you just kind of are around it all the time, and then eventually you decide that you want to like really dive into it, so that was for me around the fourth grade when we just kept going to NFC Championship, NFC Championship, NFC Championship. And that's when I kind of really dove in and started to latch on to the Eagles. And they broke my heart for years, and I yeah. just stuck with it, and and it paid off. So here we are. <laughs> Finally did pay off. Yeah. It was, it was kind of exciting. Yeah. Um, and also, I think I saw a video of you and your reaction. Uh, uh, I think it was on Snapchat or Instagram or something of you watching the Super Bowl yeah. and your reaction, dude. It was a long time coming. I couldn't, you know, I thought I would cry. I really thought I was going to cry, like when we won the Super Bowl. But I think that the only reason I didn't cry is because I got married like a few weeks before. <laughs> so I had already had like that really high moment. And then everything below that is like, oh, whatever. So yeah, right. I didn't really cry, but I couldn't I couldn't believe it. What was going through your head when you saw that uh, Eagles got the go-ahead touchdown? Um, yeah. But then there was about yeah. two and two minutes twenty one seconds something like that yeah. left for Tom Brady. Yeah. Did you think that he was going to come back? You know, um. So we we scored the touchdown and they had like the huge dramatic review of when Ertz reached out. Did he fumble it or not? And during that time, I was like, oh, of course it's a touchdown. And then when they called touchdown, it like hit me that we've seen this so many times before. Of he's going to go right down there, and I think we were down. We were up four or five or something. I think yeah. we were up five. So a touchdown yeah. had to it had to be a touchdown. And everybody was already calling him like the goat, right? So you see it like the goat's gonna go down, get another ring, beat the Eagles, break their hearts, and I just couldn't I, I was prepared for it. And I was like, here we go, you know? Mm. We got really far and I set into like an almost depression of well, that's too much time. Like if it was like forty seconds I would have felt okay, but it was like two minutes with timeouts and the two-minute warning, mm. I was positive we were losing that game. At that moment, I was like, we're losing this game. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, we hadn't got to him all night. We hadn't touched him one time. We hadn't sacked him at all, which was the strength of our team. And the second play, when Brandon Graham hit that ball out and Barnett jumped on it, 
Barnett was a rookie, by the way, which was really cool. That was really cool that he was on the field for that. Um, when he jumped on that ball, that's when I kind of realized we're going to win the Super Bowl. We're going to win. The, I'm almost crying now. I was like, we're going to win the Super Bowl for the first time, and it's going to be like, man. But but before that happened, I didn't. I was positive we were losing. I would I would have bet my house on it that we were going to lose that game. Dude, it was. Um, speaking from the perspective of Falcons fan that yeah. played in the year before, um, I was kind of the the opposite when it was 28 to three i was like oh we're winning yeah. we're definitely winning yeah. and then when they scored a touchdown and i think got a two-point conversion out of it yeah. as well i was like oh man yeah. we're still winning and then they scored another touchdown yeah. it was the moment where uh julian edelman got that one catch when they were down by eight um that i was like oh yeah we yeah. lost yeah. even though we were up by eight i know that yeah it, we were gonna lose but well, I think again, like if I, I think that if the Falcons didn't blow that lead, that I wouldn't think that we were going to lose the game. I think that mm. was part of it too, was because like if you can come back from twenty eight three, like if you can win a Super Bowl off of that, you, I mean, down seven five with two minutes left, even if they hadn't, you know, blown like won the Super Bowl before, right? It just solidified like he's he's going to do it. It's what he does. Like that's just yeah. kind of what he did. So, but regardless, Super Bowl fifty two. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you'll get one. Don't worry. Uh, one Atlanta day. will get one. When, when, get we're, one. when I'm 76 with grandchildren. You're getting it. We'll Don't see. Worry. Um, but yeah, we wanted to bring you on here to talk about the NFC East. Uh, not just the Philadelphia Eagles, but all the other teams um, as well. Let's start with the Dallas Cowboys. What do you think of this team going into 2018? Um, I don't know. They're kind of hard, I feel like, to judge because their best asset was kind of hurt all year with Zeke. You know, mm-hmm. And so I guess the question of the season for me with Dallas is, can Dak Prescott carry that team? Because the teams that you really trust, like Green Bay, you trust Green Bay, Atlanta, you trust Philadelphia, New Orleans, LA proved it last year, and then even in the AFC, Pittsburgh, all those teams have a quarterback that, you know, come hell or high water, they're going to carry your team. And last year, Dak didn't really do that. Like, he kind of did towards the end, but that's when they got Zeke back. So I think Zeke coming back is going to help them. But I think that this is going to be a year where they're going to have to decide, is Dak going to be our guy? Like, are we going to go forward with Dak Prescott? If he has another year where they go 13-3 and three and he lights it up again, yeah. But if they go 9-7, and 8-8, seven, 7-9, eight and eight, seven and nine, I think that he's probably gone. Really? Yeah, I do. It's a hot take yeah, It there. is a hot take. I think I – and I – well, I mean, because think about it. He, like, is this guy's a fourth-round pick. Like, if he – if you – if he's really as good as you think he is, you would have picked him in the first round. You would have got him at round one, two, or three. You passed on him four times. So, like, do you really believe in him that much to begin with? And he had, um, I mean, I know he wasn't great as that first year, but his first year he had Zeke. He had the best line in football. He had Witten. He had Des Bryant. He had a bunch of weapons. And the strength of their team was the running game. So, right. But last year it all kind of went away. It all kind of went away. Like, the defense kind of suffered a little bit. Zeke was out. Um, Des wasn't that good. And you kind of saw, like, He's good, but are we going to pay him, you know, $130, $103 million over five years good? Right. You know what I mean? And I think that that's the decision that they have to decide is, is that what we want to do? Because hmm. if not, they can get, I mean, they're Dallas. They can get a free agent. They can get, I mean, they don't have, they're not married to Dak Prescott. And I think that mm-hmm. if this year he doesn't show that he's that guy, I think this might be his, you know, I think they might consider moving forward with so, someone else next year. So say that. That does happen in 2018 yeah. where, say, so everything you're saying is true. He doesn't do as well. Yeah. They move on. Ultimately, looking back after this season, would you say that it was a good decision for the Cowboys to go with Dak Prescott over Tony Romo? Oh, man. I mean, I don't know. That's so hard because Romo was old. Like, mm-hmm. he, he was kind of on the down. But I don't know, man. I think long term that they probably made the right call with going in another direction over Tony Romo because he got hurt and just he was injury prone. He was old. But I just don't know that, you know, I think that they made the right decision picking the other guy. I just don't know if Dak is the right other guy. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't I think that you. he's the right other quarterback, in my opinion. In my like, I just think that he's very reliant on the team around him. Which, I mean, that's fine if you can sustain a team around you. But those guys that are going to be 10, 15-year MVP quarterbacks that are going to win you Super Bowls, they don't have – like they're not always going to have a lot around them. They're not always going to have the best defense or a great running game or a great offensive line. And you kind of – he kind of needed that, in my opinion, in his rookie year. And then when you took it away, he kind of regressed a little bit. And so I think that 
this is going to have to be the year where he shows everybody I'm worth that money. Cuz cuz if not, they're going to have to make it like they're going to have to make a decision on it. Are they going to pay him or not? Mm-hmm. Cuz I think his contract's up in 2 years. So, yeah. I think this is probably the year he's going to have to show that he's worth that money. That's no, that's that's a good point yeah. for sure. Just I was just thinking in my head historically, like you would think that it would be the right decision to go with a younger guy yeah. whenever they ball out, but mm-hmm. historically it just hasn't worked out. Yeah. Sort of as far as back I can remember with Colin Kaepernick and Alex Smith they traded away Alex Smith the older guy so that they could go with Kaepernick yeah he was hot for like yeah. two years Yeah. but then now you're looking back it's like well Alex Smith was yeah. a better decision same thing with maybe Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning Andrew Luck is a really good quarterback and yeah. he, I don't think he's really hit his highest potential yet Yeah. but as of right now Peyton Manning has gone to two Super Bowls yeah. since they've gotten rid of him yeah. so just an interesting take um what do you think are the chances that the Cowboys make the playoffs this year? Um, I have their record at 9-7, and seven, and I don't think that's going to get them in the playoffs. But I'm not going to give them like a hard percentage, but I'll say maybe 4. I mean, give or take 45. I just don't think they're going to be good enough. I, I mean, like, mm. I have their schedule right here. So they're going to play Carolina, Seattle, Detroit, and Houston all before their bye week. That's like their first five weeks. And all those teams are really similar to Dallas, but their quarterbacks are better. Like they're all really similarly built, but they all have a better quarterback. So I think those games, they'll probably lose those. Then they have Atlanta, New Orleans, and Indy all after the break, which again are teams that they should probably lose to. But I think that they, I mean, obviously they're not going to lose all those games, but those are just really tough. That's a tough, you know, yeah. Uh, those are just tough opponents, and I think that they're gonna win some, lose some, probably come out at nine and seven ish. I can see that. Yeah. I can see that. I think last year they went nine and seven as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could be wrong, but I, but I mean, they do. I have here they're getting back Zeke, so that's gonna help them. Yeah, he'll hopefully be there for the full year for them. Um, they're getting Sean Lean back, which is big because he was out all last year, so that should really help them. Um, but that guy, um, what's his name, Irving, got suspended though those first four games. That's true. Yeah. So like. Is that how much is that going to hurt them in their first four games? Are they going to struggle with that? Are they going to because if they can come out three and one with those first four and their defense really gets bolstered about week five, they might have a shot. But I think that nine and seven for me, just reading off that schedule, mm-hmm. it's hard to see them, yeah. you know, get into the playoffs because the NFC I think is way more competitive than the AFC as of right now. Yeah. Um, so you have those teams like Detroit, like Carolina, um, Atlanta that are fighting for like those wild card spots if not the division yeah. spot um but it's gonna be tough for dallas to get a, a division title yeah. with philadelphia in division yeah. so and i have one this, this is an interesting point looking at that i just thought of this so if you took those carolina seattle detroit houston atlanta new orleans and indy right i have a feeling if you looked at that schedule before the season dallas would be favored to lose all those games before any injuries or anything like that Hmm. but i wonder if romo was the quarterback how many of those would flip you know what i'm saying like how many of those would have flipped if it was romo like would romo be favored against the panthers and cam newton probably 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 so that right there i think is going to be the thing is like it's not that their team is that is a nine and seven team? I just think that they're playing opponents whose quarterbacks are just better, and I think that's going to matter. And yeah. I think that that's going to be the the factor of like, well, we went nine and seven. If we had someone a little bit better, would we have maybe went eleven and five, ten and six, which could make a that's a, I mean that's a make or break playoff right there. Yeah. So I think that that's probably going to be the theme of their season. Um, let's move on and let's talk about the Washington Redskins. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of quarterbacks, they got in, or they traded in for Alex Smith. Um, How do you think this team's going to do in 2018? I don't know. I like Alex Smith a lot, but I just don't... They don't have any weapons. They just don't have... Like, to me, I don't... Jordan Reed's a beast. Jordan Reed is an animal. But outside of that... I mean, you look at the success they had the last two, three years. They had Garcon. They had... um, Who's the running back that tore it up? Morris, right? Alfred Morris, yeah. Alfred Morris was great for a few years. And then they had Deshaun Jackson with Jordan Reed, and there was just plenty of options. Yeah. And I just don't think they have that this year. And when you look at Alex Smith, his best years, he had a lot of really good playmakers in space with a really, really smart head coach. Mm-hmm. Like you look at um, San Francisco, he had Harbaugh, and then in uh, Kansas City, it was Andy Reed. Both those guys are just offensively really good. Like they just yeah. are really good at adapting their quarterbacks, really good at. West Coast stuff of getting guys open in space on mismatches. So Jay Gruden hasn't shown me he can do that. But 
Alex Smith has kind of shown that he needs that. Because if you look at his first seven years, he didn't have that. But he got better over those seven-year time, and he's a much better player than he is. But I don't think that he's going to be have enough around him to really do anything. Yeah. Because he's yeah. kind of like a, a – a, not average. He's like a second-tier quarterback, third-tier quarterback anyway. Mm-hmm. And I think that that plus – average weapons with a great tight end isn't going to do it you, you physically jordan reed is a good tight end he hasn't been really that productive maybe because of the injuries or um the emergence of vernon davis who's yeah. seems like an ageless wonder um jameson crowder as well as someone that's a slot wide receiver that yeah. might do well yeah but I, I i could see your point where you know where the weapons compared to like two or three years ago yeah. here in washington is that why they traded for Alex Smith? Maybe he's someone that can, you yeah. know, manage the game really well, yeah. despite of who's around him. Yeah, possibly. Um, and they've they've got a guy Chris Thompson, um, who showed out in a couple of games, but he's more of like a receiving kind of back as yeah. well. So, um, do you think that they'll make the playoffs? I have them um, seven and nine, and here's their. I hear some of their schedule stuff too. This is their first five games. They've got Arizona, who's going to get back David Johnson. They were going to be, I think they're going to be really good. They got Arizona, Indy with Andrew Luck back. They got Green Bay with um, Rodgers back. They got New Orleans and Carolina in their first five games. It's tough. And like Dallas, that's a really tough first five games. So I could see them. I think they might go two and three in those, and or maybe even one and four. Really slip and then kind of come up later, but it'll be too late. I just don't think that they're. I just don't think they're talented enough. Is the end of the day with the Redskins. It's not that they're bad. I just don't think that they're talented enough. Yeah. And I think that they're playing teams, especially in their own division, that are more talented. And those first five games are going to be tough for them. So I have them going seven and nine. Yeah. No. It's it's definitely a tough conference, like we mentioned before. Um, but yeah, we'll see how do they do. Um, Going into 2018, we're going to continue talking about um, all the teams or the remaining teams in the NFC East, the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. But first, I want to talk to you guys about Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way that you can sponsor your favorite content creator. So you can sponsor anyone that makes content. You can sponsor a videographer, a YouTuber, a podcaster, um, a stripper, I guess the they make content, I guess. <laughs> they take off content. Eh, it kind of counts, I guess. But um, what you can do is you go to patreon.com um, and you can search for any content creator. And it's kind of like a GoFundMe, but it's monthly. Um, you choose how much you want to pledge every single month. And w- here at Time to Football, we just kicked this off. And there's perks for you pledging. So if you pledge $5 a month, um, you'll get a free T-shirt sent to you. If you pledge just as little as a dollar a month, um, you get a free town football wristband. But if every single person that uh, pledged just one dollar a month that that was listening to this pledged just one dollar a month, we would have enough money to to grow town football sh- tremendously. Um, and you can go to patreoncom slash to football and kind of read up on where your money goes towards um, all the certain projects that we've got planned in the future. So that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash time, the number two, football. Patreon dot com slash time to football. John, I, I got to say, you're one of my favorite people that I've uh, talked with on, oh, this, thanks, on this podcast. Man. Yeah, I you just... It. You Thanks, got the man. You you, yeah. you got the hot take uh, on, on some stuff. Some yeah. people are very conservative. Yeah. You know, but you're like, no, like Dak Prescott, I'm dude. Probably he's... gonna be wrong though. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, and honestly, I don't like Dak Prescott because I remember the first year when he he him and Carson were rookies at the same year, and everybody said Dak was better, and they're so dumb for saying Dak Prescott is. Oh, I know Wentz had his numbers were worse. His records were worse. People who said that Dak Prescott was better than Carson Wentz did not watch Carson Wentz play football. That guy mm-hmm. wasn't – he was an animal. Like, he could get out of – he's – first of all, he's actually more athletic than Dak Prescott. He's quite, He's faster. He's quicker. He's stronger. His combine says it. The tape says it. All that says it. And he did – what he did with what he had was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was incredible. So, my, it's nothing again. I, I don't like Dak to begin with. And I think that that might have fueled the hot take, but I do think that Dak Prescott needs to prove that he's the guy. Yeah, absolutely. I think that uh, 
going into year two for Carson Wentz, um, I was really big on him. Yeah. Um, I was like, dude, this guy's going to throw over yeah. 30 touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, and he threw what, 33? 33, yeah. 33, yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah, would have been the MVP if he didn't get hurt. Yeah, that that would have been the MVP. No, I agree. I think that uh, you know the MVP. This this is probably a different topic for a different day. But the MVP, it's gone to like the best quarterback. Yeah, right? it does. It's not the same as like an NBA or NFL. It, it's I not mean, or MLB. It's not the same. But it, it's it's not. Which I mean, last year Carson Wentz was definitely deserving of yeah. that if he played all you know sixteen yeah. games. But uh, I mean, if you want to go with a best quarterback last year. Honestly, he could have been Russell Wilson. I think he did it all. He did everything. Yeah, he... Uh, he yeah no, I see what you're saying. You I know? think I read a statistic where he was like, he accounted for 75% of their offense. Yeah. Because with his running, too. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't. I, that's really hard to argue. It's, that's it's really tough. it's really hard to argue. I think I I don't think that I would trade Russell Wilson for Carson Wentz for one season straight up right now. But if someone wanted to, I would understand why. I would yeah. understand why. Yeah. Like if some Eagles fans were like, yeah, I would rather have Russell Wilson than uh, Carson Wentz. I'd be like, yeah, I can see why. You know, the Eagles actually almost had Russell Wilson. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, I was reading. It kind of it, it worked out, but we almost had him. Mm-hmm. We interviewed him and and uh, and we said we wanted him to his face and he said all right go get me and then the Seahawks had him two picks before we were going to take him. Did you uh, so in the end though you prefer Carson Wentz over Russell? Right. Well, how it yeah, worked out? I think that he, I think his ceiling is higher. I just think he has a higher ceiling. But I mean Russell Wilson's proven like he he's shown that he can do it. Yeah. But I think that the projection is that Carson Wentz can also do it and maybe better. Hmm. The projection is right. I mean right, right now right, like right. he's like. I mean, who? If you were going to pick for the next ten years, a quarterback, Carson Wentz would be at least three. He's top of the list. Yeah, I, I mean, like him and Luck, if he's healthy, yeah. are like you would take. You just would take them over anyone else. But Wilson has done it already, so like I would understand why if someone said Wilson's better. I'm not going to argue. No, definitely. Yeah, I just, I don't know. Um, but going back onto the teams that we were talking about in the NFC East. Uh, Next up, man, we're just itching to talk about the Eagles, aren't we? It's a, we're getting there. We're man. getting there closer. Thanks for last. Um, Thanks for last. Definitely. And, and the third team that we're going to talk about is uh, the New York Giants. So what's your take on them? Well, um, I I don't feel bad for the Giants, but they had a rough break last year with OBJ getting hurt. And, the, I mean, that just – he had – again, they had – that was a team that had no weapons. And Eli getting benched for – who 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 was even the backup that for that Gino game? Geno Smith. That's right, Geno Smith, the other New York quarterback. Um, I They had a rough year. And I, I don't think they're going to be that bad this year. Yeah. I think that they're – I think their biggest question is can they block for Eli? Because last year they couldn't. Their offensive line was awful. It was just not very good. Mm-hmm. And you can add a great running back to that or a projected great running back, but if their offensive line isn't there, you know, how good are they really going to be? But I have, I have a feeling they're going to be a lot better than they were last year. Yeah. Speaking of their offensive line, they got Nate Soldier out of New yeah. England. Uh, they drafted a guy, Will Hernandez, who's projected to be the first round. They stole him in the second round. Uh, so it's going to be better, definitely. Uh, at least they can run. Towards the right side with yeah. Saquon Barkley a yeah. lot better. Do um, you think that's going to be tough to stop the the run game? No, I'm um, for the Eagles. No, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that. Um, I don't know. I think that Barkley. It depends how good he is, because like he could be Zeke or he could not. Like everybody's saying, oh, he's the next Zeke, and Zeke was unstoppable. He could also be Christian McCaffrey. You yeah. know, where it's like he's good, but like. I mean, he's just an, another guy back there right now. Right. So I guess the question is, I think that I, I think that Zeke. I mean, not Zeke. I think that Barkley will have a really good year if the offensive line is significantly better. I don't think that he's going to come in and be the difference maker by himself. I think him plus an, a revamped line could be pretty good. And the, just the fact that Odell Beckham is going to make it really hard to stop the run because you can't load the box because OBJ he will burn you. Like he'll run right by you. That's a touchdown. So I think that getting him back is also going to help the running game in return. Going to take pressure off of Eli, which is going to make him play better. So I think they're set up for a pretty good year. I think so too. I um, I was talking to actually Michael Watson, who was on this podcast previously. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> um, actually, he was sitting in the same seat that you're sitting in right now. Uh, I, this just, ex- I love you, Mikey. <laughs> we were talking about the the Giants, I think, um, and we were talking about Saquon Barkley 
I think, yeah, we were talking about the NFL draft, how the yeah. Giants did in the draft. Um, can, we, I, can I interject right there, by the way? Yeah, for sure. They should not have taken Barkley at two. Really? Especially with Baker Mayfield going one. That was not smart. Really? You think When's like- the next time they're going to pick in the top three? Oh, that's... When's the next time they're going to be that bad? Everything lined up. Mm. Everything lined up for them to go get Darnold. Like that's true. everything was there for them. But I mean, I just don't under. I, I'm glad they didn't because now they got to figure it out after Eli's done. So, so if the if the Browns took Sam Darnold, then it would yeah, be okay. Bark. I mean, I, in my opinion, I think you take Bart. Like right. if if Darnold goes one, I understand that. If you're not really sold on anybody else. There's no way the Giants didn't think that. I mean, Sam Darnold was the guy. Yeah. He was the guy. And I think that having him behind a two-time Super Bowl MVP quarterback would have been ginormous for them. I think that would have been huge. But I think that they made the, the win-now move. Mm. And I think that they – I think they – I don't know when they're going to pick in the top three again. That's a good You know, good like point. when are they going to pick there again? That's true. They yeah. could have traded – I mean, they even could have traded down to five – uh, to Denver, Denver could have had Chubb there. They could have done anything with the pick. I don't think the running back was the right choice. Not because he's not going to be good. I just right. don't like. They might not ever get in the top three again for years. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do? Who's who's going to be your guy? Eli's got two, three years left That's in a true. division with Carson Wentz in it. You're going to have to have a, a quarterback. You're going to need somebody. Mm. So when when uh, Mayfield went one, and they didn't take Sam Darnold, I thought that was a big mistake. Hmm. I understand why they took Barkley. I get it because he's he was the best player in the draft. I don't think that he was the right pick for them. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I think that. Uh, I mean, I, I I thought it was a good pick picking Barkley, um, but I mean, I'm, I'm looking at more of like the Browns' perspective where they shouldn't have taken Baker Mayfield number that's one. True. Yeah, but they could have taken. They could have had Barkley and Mayfield if they just would have taken they, Barkley they one and four. Yeah, they definitely could have. Yeah. Um, and then in that case, if that were to happen, that the Browns did take Saquon Barkley, then yes, the Giants yeah. take Sam Darnold. I don't know, man. It's it's they haven't had a run game since like that whole duo with Ahmad Bradshaw, Brandon Jacobs. Yeah. Um, but 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 that was a duo. So like, but even that point is, how much is one guy gonna? Ch- how much is a running back gonna change your franchise? Well, I was actually going into what I was gonna say, um, reading up a stat. Um, Nate Burleson of NFL Network, when I was talking to Michael about this, um, he said that whoever is in the top five in total scrimmage yards for the running backs, yeah. like their receiver is in the top three in receiving yards that year. Yeah, um, it awesome. happened with DeAndre Hopkins and Lamar Miller. Yeah. I think it was like two years ago or, or last year. Happens all the time with Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown. And uh, Odell... He gets like 1,200, 1,300 receiving yards. And last year, the running game only got like 800 yards total. Yeah. Um, and two years ago, it was like around 700, 800 yards. So yeah. imagine if like Saquon Barkley can now can get like 1,200, 1,300 yards. What's Odell's potential? Well, I understand that. But think about like, think about is the value of Barkley at two better than getting someone else in the fourth round? That's like, true. that's the question is like, because last year, Alvin Kamara was the best rookie running back. He went in third round. Oh, yeah. no, Kareem Hunt was, I, th- I think, the best running back. Kareem Hunt, the, yeah. He's third round pick, right? Yeah. So at Fournette, taken at four by the Jags, he's great. Is his value that much more than taking Kareem Hunt in the third round? That's a good point. Because if it's not, then why do you take a running back that high? I think that's the thing with, like, hmm. taking a running back. No one's saying that Barkley's – I don't think Barkley was a bad – pick as in he's going to be a bust Mm -hmm. i just don't know if the value for what that does for your team is worth taking it above a guy who could be your quarterback for 15 years especially when eli is like two years away from retiring two three years away that's That's my point is like a really good point like are you like a great running back is a really good asset but it's 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 value it's like is this one really worth taking it this much higher let me this is let me put it personally for like i'm a guitar player so for guitars i could have this third this uh eight thousand dollar guitar fantastic guitar is the eight thousand dollars worth the extra six grand to pay for the two thousand dollar one which is also great but not as great it's not that one is is better than the other it's how much more better is it worth to pay for it right so i think when you're looking at especially running backs like is Barkley going to be that much better than any other back in this draft? 
Hmm. Is he going to be Barry Sanders and the rest of those guys are going to be Peyton Hillis? You know, like, is that, if that's the case, then take him. But especially where the NFL is going with, if you don't have a quarterback, you're dead in the wall. It doesn't matter how good the rest of your roster is. I don't think that that was the right pick. Interesting. I don't think, I just don't think it was. I mean. You're changing my whole perspective on everything. Yeah, I mean, just like, man, I'm changing people out here. No, I just, (laughs) I think he's going to be great. I think, I don't want to play against him. He's going to be an animal, but I just don't. You could have had Kareem Hunt in the third round, but he took Fournette at four. Not that that's not the Fournette's going to be bad. Not that Hunt's better or Fournette's going to be better or whoever. Right. But you could have had Kareem Hunt in the third round and gotten another piece in, with the fourth pick. And I think that's the yeah. point with the Giants. Is they'll be better now, and I, I have them going ten and six, eleven and five. I think they're a dark horse to win the division. I think they're going to be a lot better. Really? But I just don't. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be a lot better because all the pieces from their from their eleven and five season are still there. They have the frame of it, except they got rid of Ben McAdoo, which was offensively horrendous, and everybody assuming health is going to be back. But I think that long term. They made the wrong decision on that pick just because you could add Sam Darnold and you could have had him sit for two years behind Eli Manning and compete with Carson Wentz for the division. Man, that's crazy. That's yeah. a crazy way to look at it. Um, that being said, I don't want to play them next year. I think they're going to be scary. So you so you got, I'm assuming we haven't gotten to the Eagles yet, but um, Giants are going to make a run for the, the division I, title. I think so, and yeah. I do. Okay, okay. Especially because no one has repeated the um, NFC East – the NEC champion hasn't repeated since 0304. It's been a long time since it's been back to back champion. It's just every year they're just kind of like the NFC East is like I th- in my opinion I think it has the best overall rivalry in football from team to team because they're all so close. Like one year Dallas can go 4 and 12 and you can beat up on them twice and the next year they can go 13 and 3 and win the division. And then it could flip again next year and I think that that is kind of like the theme of the division. And I think that the Giants might be that team that that comes up and wins it. I hope not, but I had them go on like ten and six, eleven and five. Nice, yeah, nice, dude. You you have a good way of uh, convincing me to go against my points. <laughs> you are, you are. It's it, it makes a lot of sense. I got Beth to marry me, so I do. I'm pretty persuasive. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, I think it's time to talk about the, your favorite part of this podcast Let's go. um the philadelphia Woo! eagles so coming off a great season a great super bowl victory for the organization the fans the whole city are they going to be better or are they going to be worse <sighs> okay oh man uh, i think that they are going to be a better team with the worst record I think they're going to be better than they won than they were the year they won the Super Bowl. They're playing a division winner schedule, so they're going to play. Um, that makes a difference because they're going to play the Vikings and they're going to play the Rams. And I think both of those games are at, no Minnesota's at home, LA's on the road. Yeah. So they're going to play those two. That does make a that I mean that's a difference. You would rather play Chicago than Minnesota. It just is what it is. So they're going to get two additional games that are pretty tough. Um, they're getting everybody back. I have a list of people who they're going to get back. They're going to get Wentz back. I have another. That's, that's a big yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. So Wentz is going to be back. Uh, hopefully, the reports are that he's doing fantastic in camp. Jason Peters is back. Mm-hmm. Darren Sproles is back. Everybody kind of forgot that he was hurt. Darren Sproles, going into the season, if you would have said who's the Eagles' best offensive weapon, you would have said Darren Sproles. Hmm. You, like, he, you, like, I think uh, he broke the record two years ago for total scrimmage yards yeah yeah i think i think it was about uh, four or five years ago with the saints yeah well i think he rebroke it in philadelphia i'm pretty sure he rebroke it yeah that's crazy check me on that don't quote me (laughs) i'm pretty sure he rebroke it but he i mean he was at least the most proven offensive weapon on the eagles if not the best at the time so he's he's gonna be back we're getting jordan hicks back um that's a big one and then we added mike wallace on the outside got rid of tory smith um, Tory Smith was supposed to be somebody who kind of stretched the field. Um, he, I mean, he was okay. I think Mike Wallace is an upgrade. Um, our draft pick, Dallas Goddard, I think is going to be really good. Mm, I think he's yeah. going to be good because he's not, he's in a unique spot where he is a first or, or high second round talent. Who's not being asked to be the starting tight end. Hmm. Like when you look at, um, 
Like when Detroit took Eric Ebron a few years ago, he was supposed to be their starting number one tight end. I, I, Dallas Goddard isn't going to have that pressure. So I think he's going to be really good, but I don't think he's going to be... He's not going to have the numbers, but I think his impact is going to be really great. So I think he's a big addition. He's, he's a good replacement for Trey Burton. Yeah, he's really good. And Brent, I think Brent Selleck... Yeah, Brent Selleck has gone too. Trey Burton, I think is... I'm sad he left, man. He's part of that Philly yeah. special. I'm sad he <laughs> left. Um... So yeah, I think he's going to be a good replacement, and then Marcus Wheaton. I don't know how many, how much time he's going to get, but I think he's an addition. Um, and then the strength of our defense last year was our defensive line. Everyone came back, and we signed Haloti Nada and traded for Michael Bennett. So mm. if you take the strength of your team and make it better, I think that, I mean, that's just incredible. I don't know how they did that. That's amazing. Um, Sidney Jones is a big player for us. He was our cornerback. We took him in the second round last year. Out of Washington, he was supposed to be a top 20-ish pick, and he tore his ACL. So he fell in the draft. We took him when he was hurt. He didn't play at all for us. He'll be back. And then, so, all right, I'm not, do we trade Nick Foles for another player? Because that could happen too. Like, like you have a piece there where Foles is coming back. Could you trade him for something that's going to help you win now or an asset like that? So I think that they're going to be, more talented and more together and a better team, but I think they might have a worse record. And I think the hardest thing for them is they're going to have to adapt, and this is Doug Peterson, they're going to have to go from being the underdog to they're the hunted now. Like, everybody's going to want what they have. And I think that for them, like last year, that underdog role was huge for them. Like, yeah. even as an Eagles fan, I latched onto that. Like, I was pissed off that teams didn't pick us to win. I was upset that we were an underdog at home to the Vikings. That made me angry. Yeah. Like, that made me angry that we were a home underdog in every playoff game that we played. Yeah. Like, that makes me angry. Like, <clears throat> they're the hunted now. Everybody wants what they have. And so I think their mindset is going to have to be, like... Just because we got one, like, are we going to be content with getting our one or are we going to want, like, are we going to pursue this harder? And I don't, there's just been so much celebration from the players over it that I don't know if they have that mindset yet. Mm -hmm. And I think they could be in for a rude awakening week one, week two, week three. Like that, that Atlanta game is going to be a big, a big tell for us because that's going to be the banner celebration. That crowd is going to be going absolutely crazy, raising the banner. It's going to be amazing. But we took what the Falcons wanted, and the Falcons were right there and didn't get it. Like, Mm -hmm. that's every team's thought process, and the Eagles took it. And so now they're the hunted. They're going to get every team's best shot. Their their mindset is going to have to change from this underdog little engine that could story to we have to defend this title. And if you want it from us, you got to take it from us. Like, you are going to have to come take this ring off my finger. Yeah. And I don't know if they can, I just don't know if they're going to do that. Man. So, and not to mention that the Falcons. Our better team, much more in sync. Uh, you're, you're looking at me like they're uh, okay. All right. You think okay? Well, I think so. I, well, uh, I'm. I. What do you mean by they're a better team? Offensively, they're going to be much more in sync. Oh, I thought. I oh, I see. What, I thought you meant better than the Eagles. Oh no 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 no! no, no, no. Whoa 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 whoa! When you said better team, I thought you were saying than the Eagles. Oh no! That's okay, still, okay, that's okay, still okay, tough. okay, that's, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, no, the Falcons will be better. Yeah, they'll be better. Um. Yeah, so not not to mention that the Falcons will be better in general compared to yeah. how they were in uh, yeah. 2017. Gunning for like, you know, like you said, they're now the hunted. Yeah. Gunning for eight, going to get their best shot. So that's going to be uh, pretty tough. Um, also, our statistician um, just filled us in. And by statistician, I mean my MacBook. <laughs> um, Darren Sproles did not break the record with the Eagles. It's still okay. still with the Saints in 2011. Did get close? Uh, actually, the only times that he was on the list, he was first with the Saints. He was 26th with the Chargers and 35th with the Chargers. See, all my credibility is gone now. See, I'm gonna everything I said is going to be wrong. Everything? everything I, don't listen to me. <laughs> John has no idea what he's talking about. So when you guys listen to this podcast, we're just it's just going to be my voice yeah, just asking questions. He's, he's and then, me yeah, that's, that's all that's going to happen. Um. I just, there's been so much celebration and the parade, the parade at the Super Bowl at the Broad Street was unbelievable. I had friends that went to it and they were just like, Mm. it's just, you know, it's like this in every sports city, I think, but people don't, unless you're kind of in it, you don't really get it. Like the, the Eagles, the Flyers, the Sixers, the Phillies, like 
if if they're doing really well, you're doing really well. And if they're not, you're not. And it's that it was really that simple for the Eagles. Like their fans are so die hard because that's just like what people have to look at. Mm. Like in the city, it's like you know you see people who are like grown 65 year old men that are just like literally crying i just want a super bowl before i die that's what that's like my wish before i die is to see this and it's something really special that the players are aware of and i think that now that they've given that to the fans and they've kind of like released that like you have this championship and we gave this to you and it was like this incredible story of this underdog city and like that's kind of what philly is with rocky and with invincible and vince papali and all that stuff and the team embraced that and it just feels like for me like when i was watching it it just felt like that all the anger and all the sadness from all the other years just went away for Mm. me and i'm sure that's like feeding into the team because for me it's like we got it like we did it like if we never win another one i've seen one but the Eagles can't have that mentality. They just can't. But I know a lot of fans do. It's like, man, I saw the Super Bowl. I saw us win a Super Bowl when I never thought I would. Kind of like how Cavs fans feel, I'm sure, with LeBron. Like if LeBron leaves, it's like, whatever, man, you gave us a title. Go do your thing. A lot of fans feel like that. And because the fans kind of feed the team so much, I'm afraid that the team is is having a, a hangover party where they're kind of really excited that they won the Super Bowl. And I'm not sure if they're going to be able to flip the switch. And just be the be the hunted. Yeah, because um, yeah. other teams haven't had that. Yeah. That, you know, like we were talking about Atlanta. Atlanta hasn't had that high yet. Yeah. Now, granted, Atlanta as a city isn't as big of it, like a, has a sports fan base as mm-hmm. compared to maybe like Philadelphia and other sports cities out there like Pittsburgh, Chicago, yeah. uh, Boston. But um, yeah, other teams, organizations, players on those teams are gunning for that. They want yeah. that high. They want that moment to go to the Super Bowl. <clears throat> and the Eagles, I'm sure they want it too. But do you want it more than you want to stop thinking about the last one? Like, do you just are you just going to hold on to the last one, or are you really going to let it die? Like, Doug Peterson said at the at the ring ceremony, he said this ring ceremony for us. I think it's time for us to put this to bed and to let it go and to like it's time to move on. And that message is what he said, but I just want to know if players are really feeling that. Right. I want to know if they're like really like embracing that. I know Carson Wentz is because Carson that's that's a good thing is cuz Wentz he didn't play in the Super Bowl, so he has something to prove. Like he's still hungry for that ring cuz even right. though he's got one, he didn't win it. He wasn't the guy who won it, but I'm just a little concerned that they're not going to be able to adapt to that being the hunted. What's what's even concerning to me is they're playing in LA and yeah. that's where that's where it all happened oh, i set into such a deep hour depression after that yeah. i was watching the game and i saw the hit and i didn't think any i i, I was like ooh, that's kind of bad but he stayed in after that he threw a touchdown yeah and then walked off the field because he's the goat <laughs> <laughs> just kidding he's not the goat but he um you know when he went to the locker room i was like okay he didn't come back, and then the, there was no report, but everybody just said that they were shaking their heads. And I remember we won the game, and it was a great game. It was close, and Nick Foles threw that first down that sealed it. And my wife, I was so upset, and my wife looked at me. She's like, what's wrong with you? Like, why are you not, like, why are you sad? And I just remembered, I said, that's it. Like, that's our season. Like, he was, we're done without Nick Foles. And everybody, and like, everyone felt like that. Everybody felt like their season was done. So... Take that, like, we went from the highest of highs to we're winning the Super Bowl midseason to we have no shot to then we won the Super Bowl. All that emotion, the Eagles have to drop it like that because you got to get to work and you got to go win another one. Go win another one. And I don't know if they can do it. And I'm scared as an Eagles fan. You were talking about they're going to be a better team with a worse record. Yeah. What's the record this year? I think eleven and five ish. I think around with the that I think they're going to be really close with the Giants. I think they're going to be. I think they're probably both going to finish eleven and five, ten and six, and one of them is going to. It depends how the rest of the NFC is. I think that ten and six won't get you in as a wild card. I think eleven and five could. Mm-hmm. I think that. I think that the Eagles are have to. They're going to have to go eleven and five to make the playoffs, and I think that they're they're probably going to go eleven and five ish. So you've got the Philadelphia Eagles. Winning the division title or is it New York Giants? I'm going to say the Eagles are going to win it. I think it's going to be close. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, I have their schedule up too. So <clears throat> they're going to play Atlanta. That's going to be – that's a playoff team. 
that should that's going to be a that's so that's a playoff opponent. They're going to play Tampa Bay without Jameis. They'll win that. Mm-hmm. Indianapolis is going to get back Andrew Luck. So while on paper you'd think they'll beat Indianapolis, Andrew Luck's going to be back. So how much better are they going to be? Tennessee was a playoff team. So right now let's call that four playoff caliber teams. They're going to play Minnesota. That was a playoff team. I think New York is going to be a playoff team. That's six playoff teams. They play Carolina, Jacksonville. That's eight playoff teams. They're going to play Dallas. Uh, I won't call them a playoff team, but that's still a hard divisional opponent. They're going to play New Orleans. That's nine playoff teams. They play New England, uh, not New England. They play New York again. They're going to play um, LA. That's 10 playoff teams. And they're going to play the, um, not the Rockets. Why did I just say the Rockets? They're going to play Houston with uh, Deshaun Watson. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why I can keep blanking. Yeah. Deshaun Watson, who will probably make the playoffs. That's 11 playoff teams. That's crazy. Yep. That's so insane. that with the fact that like you're gonna get all those playoff teams best shot, yeah. I think that they're like I think they're more talented, but everybody's gun informed now. Like everybody's gonna want to take them out, and you're gonna get eleven really good teams that you're gonna have to play. Wow. So I think eleven and five is where they're gonna sit. Ten and six. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, and then the second you got the New York Giants. Yeah. Around there, like eleven five, ten six, yeah. I'm as well. Um, and then I have a uh, Dallas, and then I've got Washington. All right, your take on the NFC East, John. <laughs> I love it. Thank you for so for joining us on this podcast. Yeah. Um. So, I kind of sent you this question before, so that you can you can kind of think about it, yeah. and I kind of think I know the answer to it. But yeah. uh, we always ask every single guest on this show what their favorite moment of football is. So whether it's like professional football, college football, yeah. you played football, like what a what is your favorite football moment? Can I give you two? You you sure okay. can. Okay, so my my well my well I'll give them in reverse order. So my the second favorite one was um, the game when Deshaun Jackson had the kickoff return for the touchdown against the Giants. That was a good. That one. game I turned it off and walked away. I I was hanging out with my friend Vince and we were down thirty one seven with seven minutes left in the fourth quarter and I clicked it off. It was I was like this is stupid. I was so mad because we were playing so well and then New York came in or we went to New York and we were playing like absolute garbage. And I was sitting up there, my friend and I turn on Xbox, we're playing Xbox, and I just hear my dad go, oh, oh, and he's just yelling like every four or five minutes. And we had just been piling on these touchdowns on the comeback. And my dad's like, John, you got to turn this thing on. And I'm like, I don't want, I don't want the heartbreak, dad. Just leave it. We're not going to win. And my dad said, we tied it up. Turn it on. And I turned it on. And for some reason, I think that was a... That was a Fox game, and I have two Fox stations, and one of them is on delayed. So I watched the tying touchdown where he threw the he Vic threw it to Macklin, and Macklin tied it. And then New York went three and out, and um, when they kicked it to Sean Jackson, he returned that touchdown. I could not believe it. That was one of the coolest moments I've ever seen in my life. Just because it was just funny because my dad was ow, oh, ow. Oh. John, turn it on. It was just really funny, and it was yeah. just – I thought that was a good representation of what that season was going to be with the resurgence of Mike Vick, and it was really cool at the time, but then we kind of flamed out and lost to the Packers. But then my favorite moment was when Brandon Graham stripped Tom Brady and uh, Barnett dove on it. Uh, that play for me – that play is above the Philly special play for me, like all yeah. time, just because like the Philly special thing was cool, but that play sealed the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And a rookie dove on it, and Brandon Graham was like – you know, that was a cool story where Brandon Graham was picked by Howie Roseman. But then when Chip Kelly came in, Brandon Graham was kind of garbage with Chip Kelly and we almost traded him. And then for him to get back under the the teachings and kind of philosophy of an Andy Reid kind of guy and to make that play and to win us the Super Bowl on it was so cool. So that's my favorite moment. That's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. Must be good to win the Super Bowl. It's like every other every, – I, I can barely remember every other season where we lost. It's just like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's it's amazing. I want that feeling, Atlanta. It's amazing. Please win. Do it for all of us. Um, John, again, thank you so much yeah. for, for joining us. Yeah. This was awesome. This yeah. was fun. We'd definitely love to have you come back. Um, you want to give a shout-out to anyone? Or you? Thanks, babe, for letting me go away for an hour to talk about sports. Thank you. I appreciate it. And um, yeah, just all my friends here. Love you guys. Hope you guys enjoy this podcast. And fly, yeah. Eagles fly, baby. Thank By you. By the way, oh, can I give you another one? By the yeah. way, yes. my wedding was super cool how my groomsmen did that. Cool. So everybody who's listening, I got married here in Georgia on the day when the Eagles played the Falcons and the 
the uh, divisional round last season. And my groomsman speech, my best man Vince, gave this really cool speech. And then at the end, he just played the Eagles fight song. And it was like, the that was so cool. I did not see that coming. And I thought that was really cool. So. That was really cool. Yeah, so that's a shout out to all my friends up in Philly. Thanks, Bethany, for letting us uh, steal your man. Um, and for all of you guys, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, just know that we do have a podcast on iTunes. And if you're watching this on or listening to this on iTunes, we have a podcast up on YouTube and also other video content as well. Uh, but regardless, when you go to iTunes, make sure you rate and review this podcast. Give it five stars because it definitely helps us out. tells us that you love this content. Um, follow us on all the social media sites. Just, just search Time to Football on everything, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. Search Time to Football. You'll find us. Follow us. Subscribe. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Um, and we do hate school, but stay in school. Please stay in school.